In 2015, the Japanese singer-songwriter Tsunekichi Suzuki wrote on his blog about how he left his home country at the age of 61 to go on adventure to China. Uh, the trip was one of a handful of international music tours he made in his life, uh, which would end just five years later in 2020. Tsunekichi's blog describes how, after a sound check for one of his Chinese tour dates, he went to have a cigarette on the street and a youth waiting outside asked him, is this where Tsunekichi Suzuki is playing tonight? Tsunekichi told him it was, and the young person asked, is Tsunekichi Suzuki famous in Japan like he hears uh, here in China? Tsunekichi just mumbled ineffectually. He didn't really know what to say. Later on his blog, Tsunekichi said, I should have just told the young man straight out, no, Tsunekichi Suzuki is not famous in Japan. None of the people waiting outside the gig knew it was me that they had come to see, and I thought it had been suspicious when people told me I was popular in China. But the truth is, Tsunekichi had become kind of big in China, and in Korea, and in several other countries to boot. He had achieved this level of international notoriety because of a TV show called Shinya Shokudo in Japan, uh, but you may know the show by its Netflix International uh, title, which is Midnight Diner. Midnight Diner uses several of his songs uh, in its soundtrack. If you don't know the show, it's uh, set in a wood panelled Tokyo bar uh, that caters to a midnight to morning clientele of colourful fringe dwellers. The show opens with a long sequence of the bright downtown lights of Tokyo, sand street noise. The footage is strikingly offset to Tsunekichi's gentle acoustic Irish folk influence song Omoide, or Remembrance, and you may have heard that one. Uh, this was the proverbial second wind for the singer. A significant time had passed since uh, he first came into the spotlight. A significant time had passed since Tsunekichi had first experienced a fairly short but intense few weeks in the national spotlight in 1989. His band Cement Mixers had appeared on the TV show Ikasu Bando Tengoku, which sounded like this. Hey! Hey! Say! Say! Hey! Hey! Say! Say! Hey! Say, Mavis! the TV show's title translates as Cool Band Heaven. And it was kind of like Band Stam meets Battle of the Bands meets Eurovision, but read right to left Japanese star. The show was a phenomenon in Japan and coincided with what came to be known as the band boom, where young groups played guitar and they wrested the prominence for a time from the studio manufactured idols that dominated the charts of the second biggest music market in the world. The Ikasubando Tengoku show even got its own shortened nickname, Ikaten, which had particular out of left field resonance with the word Ikaten also meaning deep fried tempera squid. Many of the bands grew out of the Hokosha Tengoku scene of Tokyo's trendy Harajuku des district, where hundreds of bands would perform on the street on the weekends. The scene had its own nickname too, the Ho Ten, and the two Ten, Zika Ten and Ho Ten, became inexorably entwined. Now all the record indie execs had to do to scout their next big thing was to take a trip down to the swinging parklands of Tokyo and literally pick a band off the street. The whole thing didn't last though. 
because the good residents of Harajuku didn't take so well to their neighbourhood becoming a default outdoor live band arena where the music and wacky fashion raged 24-7. The Ika 10 program was taken off the air at the end of 1990 and the bands were largely turfed out of the streets of Harajuku. In 1991, the bubble of the Japanese economic post-war miracle came to an end and ushered in what is now known as the Ushinawarita Junior or the lost decade. It seems Tsunekichi's hopes of superstardom were also lost somewhere along with those 10 years after his band released one album on a major label to some critical acclaim and promptly broke up. He formed another band, Tsurereko Shachu, which managed to release one album later that decade in 1997. Tsunekichi wasn't to reappear greatly in the public consciousness again until his 2006 solo album, Zeigo, which was lauded by one of the songwriters I've translated here in the past, Wataru Takada. The album was ultimately picked up to form the raw materials of the soundtrack to the Midnight Diner TV show, many have now watched on Netflix around the world. One of the strange circularities of this story is that the song Omoide, featured in the opening scenes, is itself based on the 18th century folk song from another island people halfway across the world. It is essentially a reworking of the catchily and perhaps pastorally racily uh, titled Irish folk song A Pretty Girl Milking Her Cow. Judy Garland made the song world famous by singing it in the 1940 movie Little Nelly. Tsunikichi gives the song about girls milking cows a much more ethereal feel and uh, ephemeral theme. Here it becomes a Japanese musing on the impermanent nature of things as the song's protagonist muses on such questions as what comes becomes of a breath once it is exhaled? And if you pierce through the sky and the clouds, do you find another sky and clouds waiting there beyond? I'll let you ponder those questions as we listen to the Japanese version, and then we'll listen to my English. Suzuki's Omoide. Now I'm going to play for you my translation of the song into English. Here is Omoide, or Remembrance. <laughs> Slowly drifts in the air See it billow into the clouds And the sky have vanished before your eyes See the white clouds reaching out their hands And the sky so far above the
And do you remember the clouds screaming by above the river? And didn't they look just like this? Oh, maybe my mind plays dream. See your pale breath floating over there as it slowly drifts off. Below into the clouds and sky and vanish before your eyes 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 and vanish So I hope you've enjoyed that translation of the song. Please subscribe if this is of interest. We're going to go on and have a, a look at um, the translation of the song, Go Into the Weeds. Okay, so next we're going to um, have a look at the uh, translation and sort of get down into the weeds of going through line by line and um, see what it all, all means. So this probably won't be of interest to everyone, but um, people that are interested in the language might... Uh, want to listen in so the first line in the song is kimi ga haitta shiroi iki ga ima yukkuri kaze ni notte uh, so I've translated that as see your pale breath floating over there as it slowly drifts off in the air um, and so we get this issue in the song of who is the uh, Who's the singer and who is the singee? So that's a concept in, in songwriting. In um, yeah, who who is who is talking and who is being addressed here? And it's not always clear in this song. Um, so at the start, it sounds like somebody's talking to someone because they're saying "kimi ga haita shiroi iki ga." So "kimi ga," so um, as if they're directly describing someone and maybe in a conversation with them. But then a lot of the rest of the song is sort of more like quite a poetic. Um, sort of form so it's hard to know the best way to do it but I've translated it in quite a conversational style um, so I've put so for example I've put C at the start of that C or pale breath as if somebody's actually saying look at this happening but that's not in the original necessarily and I've also done that for later um, stanzas see the white clouds etc um, so, kimi ga haite shiroi iki ga ima yukkuri kaze ni notte. Uh, see your pale breath floating over there. And we could have said white breath because it's shiroi iki, but it, I think pale sounds, um, just sounds a little better. And you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm rhyming here, so there and air. Um, and once again, there's, in the original, it's uh, ima yukkuri kaze ni notte. So really, as it drifts, slowly drifts off um, on the wind, it would be a more direct translation, but I wanted the rhyme with there, so I've gone, as it slowly drifts off in the air. And it goes on, Sora ni ukabu kumo no naka ni sukoshi zutsu kiete yuku. Which I've translated as, see it below into the clouds in the sky uh, and vanish before your eyes. So once again, we've got the rhyme of sky and eyes. Sore ni ukabu kumo no naka ni skoshi zutsu kiete yuku. And kiete yuku, first I had like disappear um, little by little. So literally it's skoshi zutsu kiete yuku. Little by little it disappears. Um, so, but I've gone with vanish, uh, mostly because it's two syllables rather than three. Dis up here is uh, hard to fit into a song. Um, and below isn't really in the original either. But I'm trying to get that sense of clouds that are, um, you know, fluffy and soft and that sort of thing. Because later on we have words like, 
ぽっかりと浮かんでる。And ぽっかり is one of those onomatopoeic words that、um, seems to be mostly used with, with clouds.、Um, so something that's soft and voluminous. So I've tried to get that sense right from the start by using words like billow.、Uh, and then it goes on to toku、uh, takai. Uh, um, which I've translated as see the white clouds reaching out their hands in the sky so far above the land. So, once again, I've rhymed land and hands. Toku takai sora no nakade. So, literally, would be you know, in the distant heights. Of the sky, the、uh, white clouds are stretching out their hands.、Um, so it's quite a, a beautiful image of somebody that's let out a breath and sort of wondering where is it going to, and the clouds are stretching out their hands and sort of pulling them in as if、um, this life force, I suppose, is getting recycled.、Uh, so it's to me, I guess, it's like a fairly you know, Buddhist imagery of. Um, like a reincarnation sort of idea, except not the idea of a, a, a soul being directly reincarnated as a new thing, as much as just any energy that's sort of cir circulating、um, through the elements. And I think this song plays into a long tradition of, of songs that are talking about the, the elements as, as a metaphor for.、Um, For life and rebirth, and、um, I'm thinking of things like Old Man River or、um, that lucky old son that gets to roll around heaven all day,、um, these sort of songs.、Uh, and yeah, later on, this does go into having、um, sky clouds but also rivers as well.、Uh, and it goes on, Kimi ga haite iki o sutte. ぽっかりと浮かんでる。ずっと昔のことのようだね。Um, so I've, I've just done that as breathing in the air, you breathed out, rolling on, rolling on, rolling on. So I haven't got the、um, ずっと昔のことのようだね。But I sort of bring that in the next stanza where I start saying, Do you remember? Um, and this is one of the lines that is, sounds very conversational. Zutto mukashi no kota no yo da ne. Which is literally, it's just like、um, way back when. Isn't it just, way, isn't it just like way back when?、Um, whereas these parts before it sound very、uh, more poetic. Toku takai sora no naka de te o no basu shiro i kumo. 君が吐いた息を吸ってぽっかりと浮かんでる。So it's just very much a description of, of nature. It doesn't sound conversational at all.、Um, and I often find things like 君が吐いた息を吸って。So in Japanese you have these words for 息、um, or 吐く and、um, 吸う。So, you've got two different words for breathing out and breathing in, whereas English we don't really have that. We just say breathing out, breathing in.、Um, but yeah, so often it's hard to translate, but I've tried to use that to advantage in this song by saying breathing in and breathing out. So, you get this symmetry.、Um, and then I've just gone with rolling on, rolling on, rolling on. So, you get this symmetry and then this repetition, which I think has a certain.、Um, Certain sound to it, and I'm trying to get this sense here of、um, yeah, clouds that are rolling through the sky. And once again, I guess I'm thinking of yeah, something a song like Old Man River just keeps rolling, just keeps rolling on.、Um, but there's also other reasons. So if we go on,、uh, if we go on to the next stanza. Uh, and I should just say, yeah, so we've got this pokkarito kandiri. So I haven't tried to directly translate. These onomatopoeic Japanese words are hard to directly translate into、e、English. But that's why I've sort of set it up earlier with using words like billow.、Um, 
hopefully that gets some of the sense of pokkari to ukandiru. Uh, and then it goes on to uh, Kawamo no ue, ue o uh, Kumo ga nagareru Terikaisu hizashi o sakete um, Which I've, I've gone with So, and do you remember the clouds streaming by above the river? Um, and uh, so I've kind of, yeah, haven't gone very directly here. So th things like, and do you remember? There's, so there's no, and do you remember in the original. But instead of saying, Zutto mukashi no koto no yo da ne, I've just, I've just put this in this conversational style where it's somebody saying, do you remember um, these things? Which I think is kind of the sense of, of what's going on. Um, and the clouds streaming by above the river. So this is quite beautiful imagery of um, Kawamo, so the the river's surface. No ue o uh, yuki um, kumo ga nagareru. So yeah, the clouds are streaming above the river. Or we could have said that the clouds are, are streaming above the stream. Except we don't really say cloud stream in, in English unless they were really pelting across the sky at a fast pace. It's not something we would usually say. Um, but yeah, I, I've used it because it sounds, you know, it's got that poetic sense. The clouds streaming by above the river and I wanted to, to keep that. Um, and this, and didn't they look just like this, is connected to the Zutto Mukashi no Koto no Yoda ne. Uh, or maybe my mind plays tricks. So that's not really anywhere in the original either, but um, you find with translating Japanese that um, there's a lot more sounds in Japanese, so you end up with all this this space at the end that you can use for other things. So it's not always the case, but usually you can say more in English in less time than you can in Japanese. So if you look at like, you know, a simple word like uh, thank you, you know, obviously in Japanese arigato, arigato. So you've got four sounds there, whereas thank you is two sounds. So if you're translating that, you've got twice as much time, which for most types of translating doesn't really matter much, but for like translating songs where it's happening in real time, it means that you have like twice as much time to fill. So I've put it in, you know, a few of my own little, um, I've taken some liberties or maybe my mind playing tricks. Maybe somebody's thinking this looks like something we saw years and years ago, but maybe, you know, can you trust your own memory? Uh, and we've got terikaisu hizashi o sakete. So terikaisu, so reflected light or reflected back light, hizashi, or um, rays of light, uh, or sakete, so avoiding the rays of the light. Nokishita ni nemuru inu. So I've translated all this as, and do you remember the glaring sun and the dog sleeping there neath the eaves? And so this word eaves is not very used very much, meaning the, the out jutting parts of a of a building nokishita um and usually i wouldn't use a word like eaves it sounds too old-fashioned but for this song i think it's 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 purposely going for quite an old-fashioned feel so even the way it's written the title omoide instead of using omoide it's got omohide so it's like an archaic older style um so it was actually nice to be able to use, use this word, eaves. And the song comes originally from an 18th century Irish um, folk song. So I think having these sort of older, older language is appropriate. And um, yeah, I suppose when Suzuki was writing the original, he was probably, I guess he would have been aware of that. I don't know. Uh, and then it goes, oh, and I like this imagery, the nokishita ni nemuru inu. So I think that's, yeah, that's quite um, beautiful songwriting to have something specific like that, a dog sleeping be beneath the eaves, um, trying to avoid the, the heat um, rather than, you know, a lesser writer might have just said it's hot or something, you know. Um, 
goes on to Omoide mo ano sore sora no naka ni skoshi zutsu kiite yuku. Um, so I've translated that and all of these memories fade into the sky as they leave. So once again, it's not a particularly direct translation. Omoide mo ano sora no naka ni skoshi zutsu kiite yuku. So if you're going literally, you might say um, the memories are little by little disappearing in the sky. Um, but I, once again, you know, I wanted the rhyme, so I've got eaves, uh, eaves here. So I've rhymed leaves with uh, eaves with leave, um, and I think we're getting the sense. It goes on to. Kono sora no mukou gawa ni wa mo hitotsu no aoi sora. And that's quite a beautiful imagery, I think. On on the other side of the sky, there's another sky there, so blue. Um, which, yeah, I like that 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 imagery of thinking about what's what's on the other side of the sky. Is uh, is there another another sky? I guess it relates to that idea of a heaven that exists somewhere. If there is this thing called heaven, where would it be? And um, is it just like? another sky existing beyond the sky that we can see is it like a um a parallel parallel world or universe uh so yeah kono sora no mukou gawa ni wa mo itotsu no aoi sora uh and it goes on dare mo inai sora no naka ni pokkari to ukabu kumo Zuto mukashi no koto no yo da ne. So we've got some repetition of of a couple of the, these lines, the pokkari. So once again, I haven't tried to translate that. That I've translated this. Dari mo inai sora no naka ni. There's not a single soul, soul or a sound, but there's a rolling, rolling cloud. So you know, once again, things like sound. There's no sound in the original, but um, trying to get that sense of dari mo inai sora. And uh, we've got this repetition happening, and I've done the repetition of this rolling, rolling cloud, which once again is not strictly in the original, but um, trying to get us across a similar sense. Uh, then we have, then, then we have some um, more repetition. Yeah, kimi ga haitta. Yeah, we're back to the start to the. Um, Kimi ga haitta shirai iki ga ima yukkuri kaze ni notte sora ni ukabu kumo no naka ni skoshi zutsu kiite yuku skoshi zutsu kiite yuku um, And we're back to the uh, See your pale breath floating over there as it slowly drifts off in the air See it below into the clouds in the sky and vanish before your eyes and vanish before your eyes um, and yeah, appropriately finishing on the Skoshi Zutsuki Diyuku. And in my arrangement of the song, I sort of gradually took out the instruments to um, do a bit of word painting on that one. Anyway, so that's um, basically how I translated the song. There's probably lots of other ways that you could um, translate it, of course. You could go for a more literal translation. Uh, I've tried to go for not so literal and make it um, sonorous and have have rhymes and be something that you could actually sing. Um, anyway, I hope that's of, of interest to people. Uh, press subscribe if uh, you're into this sort of thing. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks.